Hello, this is Howard again from Despera. We're finally up to the last component, which is the IC circuit. So, um, this one you see has uh, three connectors on one side and one big ground on the other side. So, it's very similar to our other transistors, but this is the largest thing we have. I'll demonstrate how to solder that one. Again, it's going to be similar. You're going to start off with a dab of uh, solder on one of the, th the uh, small legs because that's those are probably the least amount of material to heat up and it should go pretty quick and there you go you have a nice uh, blob right there so as I explained in earlier ones you know some of these pads may have a lot of grounding material which takes a while to heat up. Hopefully it won't be quite the case for all these. Alright, so I'm going to put it near where I want it to be. Then, obviously when I melt the solder, I can adjust the positioning to be exactly where I want it to be. Alright, so let's see. Let's move it over a little. Should be centered pretty well, and that looks good. So now it's held in place. I can try to solder the other three. Let's hope that these other ones are easy enough to put on. Again, touch the pad, touch the uh, connector, the foot, I like to call it, of the chip, of the IC. And it looks like this one might have a lot of ground to it because I'm not seeing a whole lot of melting yet. Unlike the other one, melted very quickly. Nope, it's not doing it. You can see it's just building up on my. It's building up on my um, soldering iron and not on the pad. Alright, let's try the third one over. I'm thinking this one will probably be pretty easy. Again, try not to overheat some of the components, causing the solder to melt. Alright, that one looks good. So we can see that two of the three are not ground. So let's try one more time here. No, not really. Well, let's try the back one. I may have to resort to using the air gun again. Again, try to touch the pad as well as the large ground. Well, looks like I'm just putting on the soldering iron again. All right. Again, if you're patient, you might be able to get both things heated up enough. But if you happen to have an air gun, hot air gun, it does make life a little easier. I'm just cleaning the tip here. All right, let's try the air gun again. Alright, let's try it again now that I've heated up the uh, metal. I might actually melt properly. Yep, it's hot enough now that extra heat will help me solder. Alright, that's not too bad. Alright, let's try the back side.
just doesn't want to do it. So, uh, another trick is you can use the uh, heat gun to heat up the board a little bit so the iron doesn't do as much work. Uh, let's see if I can get the solid melt down onto the board too. Alright, so just playing the heating game now. Alright, so might be enough solder on there now that I can use the heat gun again. And see if I can get it to melt nice and evenly on the IC integrated circuit. Okay, let's get hot enough. That's melted. Boy, that middle one just doesn't want to heat up. That board is just pulling away a lot of heat. You can see that the two side ones are dissolved. Not dissolved, but melted and reformed. Very nice connections. But that middle one is just not cooperating. Well, there it goes. Finally, isn't that beautiful looking, huh? The same thing over here. And it may not look it, but it's actually quite nice looking now. All right. So that is again. Now you can see it. How you soldered the last IC circuit. Let's see if we can focus. No, you really can't focus. But it is a much better finish now on the back side. The chip is quite hot, so you want to make sure you let things cool first. So that would be it. Uh, next thing we do would be the actual uh, connectors, which are actually relatively easy to do.